time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. All right, we are continuing our 49ers roster countdown with number 36, a name that we haven't heard for a little while. That's offensive tackle Justin School. Number 67, he, he's a big boy, 6'6", 315. Um, he's only 25 years old. He's entering into his fourth season, um, had his first two years where he made lots of starts. We'll detail that. Then tore his ACL early last year in June. And so he's had, you know, a full year plus to recover. Uh, they're not holding him back at all. He's out there competing. This is his fourth year. Now, he is from Fairfax County, Virginia. He played at Centerville High School, uh, the Wildcats, which I, I got to give them props. Uh, one of my favorite logos I've seen so far in researching all these schools. They have the Power Cat that Kansas State has, but it's in Carolina blue. Oh, it looks so clean. Um, anyway. Um, so it's just west of D.C., uh, not too far out there. Now, his family history and stuff is very, very interesting. Um, his his father um, works for the FBI and is like one of the top FBI people in the in the country, like super, super high up. Um, he has three siblings, two brothers, um, one sister. Dad played offensive line for the U.S. Naval Academy, and Justin uh, was working towards his degree in economics, which I believe he graduated from. I couldn't find confirmation on that, but again, he went to Vanderbilt. Kids smart, um, all that stuff. Now, his high school playing days, senior captain, Two-year starter at left tackle. Um, they went 27-3 and three whenever he was starting, including a 2013 Class 3A state championship. And then they reappeared in the title game, but losing in 2014. Uh, was an honor student, threw shot and disc. I mean, the dude kind of, he did it all. Um, received offers from Navy, West Virginia, Rutgers, Virginia, and chose Vanderbilt to fight in Commodores um, over all those, uh, those teams. And whenever he showed up... He, it didn't take long. Uh, 2015, as a true freshman, became a starter on the offensive line um, just after the halfway point of the season, got a couple starts. Um, then he comes out, started 13 games as a sophomore, played 90% of the team snaps. 2017, started all 12 games. And then, you know, he, whenever he was all said and done after his senior year in 2018, he started 40 consecutive games. For freaking Vanderbilt Condor, and and that, that's in the SEC. So, whenever I was doing my draft breakdown of him, I uh, got to see him play against Kentucky and Josh Allen, the pass rusher, right, uh, who ended up going top ten to the Jacksonville Jaguars, held his own very, very well. Um, I, I thought, you know, it was very, very clear that he could play against top level talent. Um, and you know, if if you look at kind of what he did pancake blocks i mean it was just unreal what he was able to do and and that was kind of his thing in high school as well it, whenever he shows up he puts people on the ground and that, that's just the whole idea of what he did now if you look at the accolades that he received while at vanderbilt 2015 freshman sec all academic honor roll 2016 all academic honor roll 2017 sec academic honor roll right this has been the theme of this entire breakdown down. If there was one thing I could take away, the 49ers have such a stock in academics and what they can do. Um, he would receive the SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week uh, award against Arkansas in 2018, graduated with honors at Vanderbilt, and that was kind of now he did not get a combine invite, which was really interesting. But that didn't stop the 49ers from selecting them. They selected him in the sixth round, the tenth pick of the sixth round, number 183 overall. Um Again, look at his metrics. He didn't go to the combine, so we got some pro day numbers. Ran the 40 in a 5.26, not great. Uh, three cone, 7.5, not great. Vertical, 25 and a half, not great. But he's a bigger guy. Um, and, you know, again, my write-up of him, again, started 40 consecutive games. He had 1,441 pass rush snaps. He allowed eight sacks in that time. Um, 92 pressures during that time. Ranked 35th in his class versus outside pressure. Um, had nine pancake blocks in 2018. Played in the East-West Shrine game. My, again, this is all pre-draft work before he showed up with the 49ers. And I think it, he's kind of lived up to this, sadly. Plays way too top heavy. He's very, very tall. And his waistband is kind of where he gets in trouble. Gets off balance a lot. And in college, 
school would get off balance, but he'd still make it work. Um, you know, one of those guys that was kind of off platform, you'd use that term for a corner a lot of times, but just got the job done. In the NFL, not so lucky. Um, he does keep his feet moving while he engages in blocks. Uh, could be a great, not good run defender. That's why Kyle Shanahan loves him. And because his feet are always pumping during that run block, that's where all of those pancake blocks come. Kick slide needs some work. Um, we've seen him on the left and right side. When he was drafted, John Lynch said, wins with good leverage. It just gets the job done, which is exactly what I saw on the tape as well. Kyle Shanahan said, the game isn't too big for him. Um, starting 48 games in the SEC, 40 consecutive. Um, and he was brought in when he was drafted to fight with Sean Coleman. Another name from the past for that swing tackle spot. School definitely won that. Uh, Coleman, I believe, got injured and then opted out and then I think retired. Uh, I don't know. Now, you go back to 2019, his rookie year, he played a very, very significant role for the 49ers that year in his rookie year. He started eight games, eight games, um, had over 546 offensive snaps, another 73 special team snaps. So he's got 12 career starts in his two years and has played in 31 games. So he's somebody that stepped in and started playing very, very consistently as a backup and didn't really miss much. It, it was a, it was a huge step down from you know McGlitchy and from Joe Staley in 2019, right? But he did his job. You remember Brunskill stepped in on the right side. You had School step in on the left side. You look at in his eight starts, he had four holding calls. Um, you know, so not nothing that was too significant. But you go back to that 2019 Super Bowl run. That dude. He played a very prominent role, um, and so there's a lot of history with the 49ers and Justin School, and so Kyle Shanahan's got some good memories of this kid before he tore his ACL on June 7th last year. That date's important because, because the injury happened so early, now he's full go. So he missed the entire season last year, which was awful, but... He's back, and so now he's one of those guys that's competing, and he played mostly right tackle all of camp with the first teamers. You know, McGlinchey, that's the key piece here. If McGlinchey's not healthy, which I don't know how that's going, you know, they can say it's ahead of schedule and all those things. The one thing that I do not ever take much stock in with the 49ers, especially front office, is when they talk about current injuries and how they're progressing. So, yeah, every they're going to pay every single training camp. Oh, it looks great, looks great, looks great. Look at all the D Ford reports multiple years, right? It just hasn't panned out. So we got to wait and see. I'm not quite sure McGlinchey's going to be ready to go for training camp. And if he's not, you're going to see Justin School out there with the first team pretty consistently. Um, now, that doesn't mean the job's his if McGlinchey's out. There, there's a three-man race for that as well. Justin School, I think, it, who's the front runner, Colton McKivitz, and Jalen Moore all getting snaps at that right tackle spot and all have gotten work in games at that right tackle spot. So it's going to be a battle. You know, we've been talking about this all offseason. There are so many guys on this offensive line for the 49ers and where they fit. Can school reclaim his placeholder as that swing tackle guy? I think he can, but will he? Again, whenever players come back from an ACL injury, they're not always the same. So that's something that I'm really, really looking forward to in camp in these preseason games because we're going to get to see it. They're not going to protect this kid because it's a, it's a bubble fighting spot. We're seeing the same thing with Tarvarius Moore. They're not protecting him. Get out there. Can you earn the job? If not, we're going to move on because there's depth behind these positions now. In the past with the 49ers, this is one of the guys that I think they would have sat and been very slow to bring back because they were so dependent upon him being healthy. That's not the case anymore. It's put up or shut up time with the 49ers on the back end of this roster. And we have them number 36 because I could honestly, if I'm putting bets out, man, it's a 50-50 chance that this kid's starting week one at right tackle protecting Trey Lance. So that's why we have him so high on this list. I think that he has the inside track to be the primary swing tackle for the 49ers, but it's not over. And, you know, again, if McGlinchey is healthy, that scares me a little bit for school because what if the 49ers decide, okay, we've got Trent Williams, we've got Mike McGlinchey. Let's go with upside in youth 
in the off in the offensive line because they're going to keep three guys, right? They usually keep eight. You got your five starters and you keep three backups. One of them has to be a swing tackle. But what if they decide to go just straight youth and upside? And if McGlinchy again, this is the huge caveat. If Mike McGlinchy is healthy, what if they just keep Jalen Moore, Spencer Burford, Nick Zakil? Right? They're the newest draft picks. They're the newest kind of upside plays. I don't know. It's interesting. But I, I will say this. If Mike McGlinchey is not healthy, school is a lock. If Mike McGlinchey is healthy, all right. Now it's, you know, what is the roster building status of the 49ers? Can they try to slide school in on the practice squad? I don't know. I, I'm not sure he can. The NFL hasn't seen him play in a year. Um, We'll have to see how that goes. But Justin School's been a lot of fun. It, it, awesome background jumping into this kid. Want to say shout out to uh, Josh M and Anthony C. You guys are incredible. The executive producers and researchers for this entire series. Man, we're just going to keep counting them down.